and welcome to my channel Dare to Nerd where today I am reacting to the season 4 finale of The Dragon Prince titled Escape from Umber Tour. So something that I did not catch when I was reacting to the last episode the first time was that Zim didn't go to sleep. We didn't see him fall asleep and get knocked out. We saw him looking around real concerned and then take off. So maybe Zim is still awake and he's going to try to put a stop to Claudia. Or wake the others up. You know, I can totally see him biting Rex Igneous' tail. Going, wake up! I am wearing the traditional red and gold of the Sunfire Elves in support of Jedi because I am so looking forward to the can of whoop-ass she is about to unleash on this arrogant, traitorous, racist bastard. Like, I had Karim's character all wrong. He is not so cowardly that he will send someone else to poison his sister or assassinate her when she's alone and vulnerable. No, 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 no. He's not a coward. He has the gargantuan hubris to think that he can challenge Janai to a duel and win or intimidate her into backing down. You see, he's done this to himself because he has all of his eggs in one basket. That basket being the idea that Janai will automatically back down from the challenge and cede the throne to him. What he does not realize is there's a massive hole in that basket. The whole being the fact that Janai now wants to be Queen of the Sunfire Elves. And I cannot wait for the smirk on his face to disintegrate when he realizes that his plan is not going to work and things are going out of his control. I cannot wait. Also, what do we think about his significant other, his girlfriend? I forget her name. She looks nervous and she's expressed some concern, of course, that the other horns are not going to support them, but also like the way her eyes keep traveling to her mask in the past episode, the mask being a symbol of her status, one of the horns, one of the most esteemed generals in their society. I can only imagine that with that title came some kind of oath of loyalty to the Sunfire Elves and the Queen. There may be some serious symbology behind that title and that mask. And just the way she was looking at it makes me wonder if what Karim's doing is going against her own personal morals and if she's actually going to stand up to him at some point. At the very least, she probably doesn't want to be an accomplice in... Treachery. <laughs> Last thing, am I annoying you with the Thankmas reminders yet? Good. Thankmas begins on December 10th. A number of YouTubers, Twitch streamers, TikTokers are taking part in this charity stream to raise money for the World Central Kitchen. Don't forget, don't miss out, be there. Alright, and that is everything out of the way. So without further ado, let's begin! The ninth episode of season four of The Dragon Prince. Ta-da! The funniest substance known to man or elf. I call it Goofy Goo. Goofy Goo! Slime. Flubber. I wonder, they're showing this in the previously on, is the Goofy Goo actually gonna come in handy? Alright. Viren is... In the last intro. So we only got Callum the one time. And didn't get Claudia at all. So I will say the similarities between Callum and Viren and the paths that they are taking do have me a little concerned. But like I said in a previous episode, Callum I don't think is, be, is a mage or learning about magic for power's sake. He is very curious, and he wants that knowledge. He wants to learn and be able to use magic for good, uh, because it's something that he's good at and feels right for him, but also to help others, it seems. 
to protect his brother and his friends. So while the parallels between him and Viren are definitely trying to say something ominous about the path, the future paths that Callum might take, I don't think he's going to really follow in Viren's footsteps in the way he uses magic and for this for what purpose and what ends now he may accidentally play into Erevos's plot kind of like Erevos had, himself had said he's destined to play right into my hand but I don't know Callum has a way of surprising people with his abilities and uh, overcoming the odds and expectations of others. So he might be the person to catch Erebos by surprise. We'll see. Oh, wow. Powerful sleep spell. Oh, they're with her. Oh. And quietly. No waking the dragon. <laughs> oh, it's holding his. <laughs> it's like, whoops. Hey, Mr. Dragon, wake up. Time hey. to rise and shine and Sorry. eat the best. Humans are trying to immediately. Wake up! <laughs> Hope it's not too uncomfy. Oh. Soren loves salad. It's disgusting. What'd he say? It's disgusting. Are you a friend of yours? Not anymore. Up oh, there's Zim! What are you doing? <gasps> Shh. Quiet now. Hiding in As the. If you're strange little life depends on it <laughs> i can't believe vera didn't see those eyes popping out of the gold he's hiding in the gold i wonder why the spell didn't put zim to sleep if it could put a full-grown arch dragon to sleep i don't know he stuffed his ears full of coins i guess i don't know i feel a little sorry for sir sparkle puff as he was being led away like a child was like but 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 <laughs> okay and i paused to ask another another question when claudia made her entrance in the last episode she said oh you always were such a clever human weren't you callum did that come off as particularly nasty to anyone else like i guess she must have some resentment towards callum which i mean in a way makes sense he did play a part in killing Viren. you know i guess she sees his actions as a betrayal to her by siding with the elves and the dragon prince. But yeah, that was the first time we'd really heard such venom from her towards Callum. Rilla, wake oh. up! Rilla, wake it's up! Me, Soren! <laughs> Inchworms his way over. Did you just roll over, girl? Headbutt her. We could really use a map to the map. <laughs> oh, she still has her nose thing. Oh, I think I found the map. It's in the dragon's mouth. He had it in his mouth! Oh! I was wondering where he was hiding that thing. I was like, surely not amongst all the treasure. Surely. Queen Jinai, I was given this to bring to you. Hey! Cozzy! I haven't seen you since forever. It's something that was forbidden a long time ago. It's a challenge to a royal blood duel. It was forbidden a long time ago? Ooh, Karim didn't mention that, that this challenge was forbidden a long time ago? You know, for a student of history, he seems to not know a lot. Like, he didn't know about the uh, sun seed in the tree, either. It seems like a vital detail to miss. I, I liked the, the golden rays of light that are just shining through that cloud. I wonder if the corruption is weakening, maybe. The dark cloud hanging over them is starting to break a little bit. It is beautiful artwork, by the way. I know I haven't mentioned, I haven't been complimenting the art direction of the show this whole time, but look at these backgrounds, man. Gorgeous, like a painting. Okay. And here she is once again looking at her mask i will invoke my royal rights and the six horns will arrest her rights arrest her they will take it oh. 
Why are you why, why were you? Oh, damn Oh to wake her up? Oh my my guy Oh I'm so happy you're alive <laughs> And then my stinky toes did the trick Yes they did Man yeah no kidding Can you shove your feet in someone else's snout? The map is carved on the dragon's tooth no way! It's carved on his tooth. Bro. Yes. You're my brother. This is crazy. This is crazy, yeah. You do not have to accept. As you know, you could choose to step aside. You can live out your life in peace. He wants to get her arrested. Live out your life in peace, uh, liar. Step aside, Janai. Or fight. Whoop his ass! Whoop his ass! Oh, she's too good of a person! We can get the map out. What? How? Hold this. I mean, if you do a, a charcoal... If you do to the rescue. That's what you're gonna use slime for? <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, use what's in your in, at your disposal. I've got an idea to wake him up that will be equally effective, but slightly less cruel. I'm just going to stab him. That's less cruel? Sorry, oh no. big fella. Hurry Time up. To wake up. <gasps> oh. Yeah, that did it. They're right in his mouth, too. Oh, yeah, wake up. Is he gonna bring the mountain down? He looks like he's trying. Mad with rage. Yeah, I can talk to him. Talk no. To him. He's not such a bad guy once he gets in. He's beyond talking to. He's pissed. It's too dangerous. I have to try. Bro, no. Behold the glorious goofy dude. In the middle of a lake. Wait, Claudia, you forgot your stuff. My staff. Oh no, it's not worth it. Please listen to me. We're on the same side. Liars, interlopers. Oh, he thinks that th they set him up. Just take a deep breath. <laughs> okay, good. Don't you feel a little better? Oh shit. Ezrin! No! No. I think he's just knocked out. King Ezrin! I'm fine. He's alright. I just got a case of the toasty toesies. My oh. brave king. Oh. There he is. The person that she's been looking for this whole time. I have to go after him. I know. She's leaving again to go after Viren. Nice. You are a golden knight of Luxoria. Where is your honor? Where's yours? Isn't she like immune to fire? Where's your glow, girl? There it is! I was about to say. Fire don't do shit to her. What you doing? Ah! Uh, huh? Cut in half. Mm-hmm. What? Oh. You have to finish me. No. She doesn't. Then you forfeit. General Miana. History demands that you- History demands nothing. Mm -hmm. I make history. Mm -hmm. It does not make me. Yes! And I will build a brighter future for our people than you can possibly imagine. Ha! That's right! And it will be beautiful. Woo! Preach, queen! Yeah, resting your ass, fool!
but you did something illegal. You know what? I have someone who's important to you too. Oh, her parents. Oh, <gasps> and Runan. She had the pouch of coins. One thing I don't know, though, is if I threw the coins in the lava, would it release their spirits? Wow. Oh, she's Suit gonna... yourself. She's gonna throw them in the lava. No! Oh, come on. Come on, Stella. Come on, Stella, do your portal thing. Yes! Yes, I knew that would come in handy! How did you do that? This is, this is my jam, girl. This is what I do. Oh, they're just rocks. She pulled the bait and switch. So she still has the coins with her parents and Runan. I mean, you can still go after them. It might be a good idea to get out from the mountain. I've seen you do a lot of awful things. But I always believed in you because you had a reason. But what you just did... It was just cruel. Mm-hmm. Sure was. I was wondering when Terry would draw the line and be like, I'm not chill with this. Oh? <gasps> oh, ho! She gave her the coins! Oh! <gasps> Okay, my respect for Claudia has gone up. There is hope for her redemption yet. She did the right thing. Terry, Terry does have some sway on her. It takes two giants to open these. There's no way we Magic. can never give up. Never give up. At times like these, the only strength that matters is the strength in your heart. I mean, physical strength does kind of help, though. Hmm. <laughs> Magic? Oh god, is he gonna open the door? Probably. He's gonna... Is he gonna charge it? Come on, push! Bait. You too, bait. Yeah. Let's go. And... <laughs> bait's like, ah, oh, really? I have to die doing work? He's gonna hit it, and it's gonna be like he opened it. Yes! Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Bait the strength of ten armies. Y'all don't pay attention. Yep, there he is. Yeah, I knew he was gonna break the doors down. Oh shit! This is the end. Where's Zubaya? What about the strength in our heart? Like a minute ago, you were saying mm. the only strength that matters is doomed. The... Doomed is like I take it back. I was a fool. There comes Zubaya. Must be pissed as hell. Uh, <laughs> she just looking at him like, you done with your temper tantrum? Look at that. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, back up. That's the queen that you're screaming at. He's just completely closing in the door. He's like, no more visitors ever. I mean, I don't blame him. Sim, you defied me, and look what happened. <sighs> you are in. Look at him hiding. I am glad you are all not super dead. Super dead. Yeah. Little help over here. Girl, how did you survive that? Oh. I'm so glad you came back. Mm. Yay, group hug. Y'all still need to have a conversation. Just for healthy relationship's sake. Healthy friendship, even. Okay. Viren's no longer rejecting the staff and the dark magic. Ooh. Oh, no! Oh, the smile. Oh, no. He's back to Dark Viren. <laughs> Did that wear you out? It's been a while. 
So Viren has done a 180 back to the darkness. Oh, man. I was hoping he would continue on this path of struggling morality. It seems like the dark magic is corrupting him once more. I could also be wrong. He could still, in the next season, kind of grapple with what he really wants out of life. But it does seem like dark magic kind of corrupts. The more he used it, the more hostile and darker he became and less empathetic and more power hungry. Now, a lot of that was being encouraged by Erebos, but I'm wondering if the same thing is happening to Claudia. The more she uses dark magic, the more she's okay with doing dark deeds like killing Ibis. You know, she didn't kill him, but she tried. So yeah, what she did to Rayla there was pretty dark. Like, I know that she was just trying to protect Terry and get Terry back and that she wasn't actually going to drop those coins in the lava. But yeah, that I, I'm with Terry. That threat was pretty dark. And I'm glad Terry, he's, he's such a pure soul. Even though Rayla threatened his life, we know that she would never actually hurt Terry, but the threat was there. He doesn't know that. He still wasn't chill with how... Claudia handled it and I'm glad that he kind of is that voice of reason for her and that he is in her life and that she actually listens to him and cares about what he says and thinks because I feel like Terry is probably vital for keeping her from going full Viren, right? And I did kind of wonder if her dark magic bothered Terry at all. It seemed like it hadn't but from that line that he said like I've seen you do a lot of dark deeds like with dark magic, like he knows it's unethical, but he never protested because she had reasons for doing what she what she does. We finally got to see where he draws the line. So I was really wondering if he ever would draw a line or voice those boundaries. And Karim was arrested. <laughs> That was so funny that even as he lost and was sitting there on his ass, he was like, well, then you forfeit. I won. Grasping for control. Ugh. <laughs> Just, mwah, karma. And even his girlfriend didn't defend him. I knew, I knew that something was up there. She does have a sense of duty and, and saw that what he was doing was wrong and illegal. And possibly she wasn't willing to, you know, fall down with him, right? So the map that was carved on Rex's tooth, like, genius. He can't see it unless he looks in a mirror, but I wasn't seeing a lot of mirrors in among the treasure. So he wouldn't be able to view the map, but still have it in a very safe place that he can easily guard and people cannot easily get to. But oh my god, Terry used the slime to make a copy best use of slime ever to make an imprint of a map on a dragon's tooth <laughs> yes but i was saying it looks like the on the map erebos's physical prison location is in the middle of a lake which i kind of suspected it was either in this ocean or in some kind of body of water because we did see that a tidebound elf had some part to play in creating this prison so I guess next season we're going to see an arch dragon of water? Of the seas, maybe? And some Tidebound Elves? I am looking forward to those character designs. This season, in general, felt a little more serious, uh, which makes sense because our characters are older. There was a lot, there seemed to be a lot less of the uh, shenanigans and uh, playful humor that we got with the trio Callum, Rayla, and Ezrin in past seasons, uh, they have matured very, very much so. You know, Ezrin definitely carries himself with more mature confidence. And so did Callum, actually. I picked up on that. Callum was, where, where he was so, you know, uncertain and fumbly and stuttering in, like, past seasons, he was much more confident in himself and his abilities in this season. Soren was more, I don't know if goofy is the right word, but definitely not holding back on his 
humor. <laughs> there was a certain lightness about him in uh, this season, whereas there was definitely some heaviness in season three uh, dealing with his father. So I think not being around that toxicity from Viren definitely, he's livened up a lot and he's kind of found himself and his calling and where he stands in all this conflict. But yeah, it seems like while there was still that uh, Avatar The Last Airbender kind of humor, this this season had a slightly more serious tone, a slightly more mature tone overall, I thought, which I imagine will continue into the next season. It might even get a little more darker and desperate because of Claudia and Viren's continuous path towards releasing Erevos. It definitely has set up the story for the next seasons, but a fun season. It was entertaining for me to watch. I hope you also enjoyed it, but that'll be it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this episode and the Dragon Prince in general. And I will see you for the next video. Okay, bye!